Hey everyone, it's Jared from AcousticNature.com and today I have a pretty cool video planned. The last time that I was out recording water, I learned a really useful tip and I want to share that with you guys today. I'm going to be showing you the different sounds of water that you can get based on where you put your recorder. This tip is going to help you get more detailed and more interesting sounding recordings of water. Okay, so this is going to be my first recording. I'm going to put my D100 on a tripod and have it so it's about 20 to 30 feet away from the stream, focusing on this point right here. That will be the primary focus for the, this recording and the preceding ones as well. To keep things fair for the comparison, I'm going to keep all of these recordings as close to about minus 12 dBs as possible, so that when we listen to them when we get home, they'll all be about equal loudness. For the next recording, I'm going to get quite a bit closer, and I'm going to set up on this rock right here. And now that I'm so much closer, I'm going to have to lower my gain. It's on about 7 right now, and I'll show you what I have to bring it down to to get it to the minus 12 dB. For the last recording, I'm going to get as close as I possibly can, which means I'm probably going to have to go into the stream. So the water's pretty cold, but 85 degrees here, it'll be nice. So I'm going to try and set my camera up against my boots down here so that uh, you could actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> the current's pulling me in. I think I'm just gonna go across the stream completely and record on top of that rock. Normally, in this situation, you would really want to use a tripod and not hold it handheld, but a couple things about that. I've noticed that if you have your tripod in the water, the legs of the tripod in the water, and the water's moving relatively quickly, it is going to transmit some noise up through those legs and into your tripod, unless you have some kind of rubber uh, in between the connection between your recorder and the tripod itself. Um, if you don't have that, you're going to record some really just off sounding lower frequency rumbling. The other thing is too, the water was moving way too quickly right there for me to feel comfortable putting my Sony D100 on it. Uh, it would probably end up in the creek. Sometimes you just gotta make do, that's what I did. Well, that was a little nerve-wracking. The bottom there is all rock, and it's very smooth from the water flowing over it and eroding it down over time. So, a couple tense moments, but I think we got a good recording. Just a little bit of splashage on there. That's a word. But it's seen much worse than this. It'll be fine. Now all that's left to do is to go home, get the recordings on my computer, 
and listen for the differences and talk about them. But before I do that, I'm going to take advantage of this really beautiful day and I'm gonna go for a swim and do some more exploring here. Alright everybody, I am back home now and I have loaded up our three recordings onto my computer and brought them into RX and I have the 15 feet away recording, the 5 foot away recording, and the 0 feet away recording standing in the stream. In order to hear the difference between these tracks, let's have a listen. was the 15 feet away recording and as you can hear it's not overly detailed there is a nice uh, little water droplet sound almost right here play that for you and I'm actually surprised that it recorded that detail from as far away as we were Okay, let's jump over to the five foot away and have a listen to that. It sounds pretty similar, in my opinion, to the 15 foot away recording, but it has a lot more detail, especially in the low end. Um, and if we look at the difference between the two uh, in the spectrogram, the brighter orange-yellow tones, uh, the louder the sound. And if we go and compare this to the five foot away one, you can see there's a lot more definition down here. Uh, the 15 foot away one just kind of looks like white noise almost, where it's pretty, pretty even across the entire spectrum from about 100 hertz all the way up to 2000. And in the five foot away one, we can see there's a lot more definition to the spectrogram. And I think that difference can be heard in the, the lower end. Uh, let's listen to it one more time. So you can pretty clearly hear the difference in getting 10 feet closer. Okay, and getting closer still, we have zero feet away, and this one is very defined, and we are, this is the first recording that has uh, more definition in the upper range of frequencies too. And in the 15 foot away one, it's extremely blurred, getting a little clearer, getting very clear. I feel like I'm getting my eyes checked by my optometrist. Better one, better two, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so let's have a listen to zero feet away. Oh yeah, very nice. Uh, I love the difference between the left and right channel creating movement of the water. Uh, we don't really have that in either of the other two previous recordings because we were just too far away to capture that detail. When I go out to record water, this is what I'm shooting for now. This is what I want to get every time. This is the most interesting, but it does have its drawbacks. Being so close, the only thing that you will hear is the water. And sometimes it can be nice to have water in the background and birds calling and, and wind and other sound effects that are happening in uh, the foreground or uh, around the water. 
on the sides of the stream, perhaps. Unfortunately, in this uh, recording, when we were 15 feet away, there were no calling birds, but I can tell you from experience that this is far enough away to still capture bird song and water at the same time. So that's one of the main downsides to being so close is that all you're going to hear is that water. But on the flip side, it sounds really awesome. It's interesting for your ears to listen to. And it's also really good if you are in an area that does have a lot of noise pollution. Just get as close as you possibly can to that water. And the sound of the water in most cases will be loud enough to make the noise pollution in the background undetectable in the final recording. So just to uh, further compare these sounds for yourself, I'm going to play shorter clips of them, one after another, uh, so you can more clearly hear the difference between the three. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this video helps you with your future water recordings, and I'll see you in the next one.